I'm Emily Hayes, senior writer at the publication Script. I'm here at the Biotech Showcase. It's the first day of the meeting. And I'm happy to talk to Nishan De Silva. He's the CEO of Affix. Hi, Nishan. Hi, Emily. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, can you talk a little bit about um, the process your company went through in terms of the name change? Sure. Absolutely. When, we, when the company was first founded, it was called a Derm Treat. Um, and the initial focus was to go out for more dermatologic diseases. But as we developed our technology platform and realized that we had a real differentiation in targeting uh, mucosal diseases, we migrated away from dermatologic conditions specifically. And so we, just, we thought that the name no longer was appropriate, uh, Derm Treat. And so we changed it to a fix. And this little play on the word AFFIX, because the, the main differentiating feature of our, of our uh, patch is that it sticks well to wet surfaces. So that's how we came up with the Affix name. And you are based in Denmark, but you have an office in San Diego? That's correct. So the company was founded in Copenhagen. And when I joined in April of last year, part of my uh, purview is to set, set up U.S. operations and open up the, headquarter, the uh, U.S. headquarters in San Diego and also help lead the company through its next phase of growth. And can you uh, tell us a bit about the financing and how big your staff is right now? Sure. So the last financing we did was uh, Series A. It was done in the middle of 2017, led by really a great group of investors, uh, Sophie Nova Ventures, uh, Lundbeck Foundation, and Novo Seeds. Uh, and so that has funded the last couple of years of our, of our development and growth. Uh, currently, we're, we're a small company, but a focused team. We have uh, nine employees overall between uh, Copenhagen and San Diego. And how long will that financing last, and what are your future financing goals? Sure. So we're currently conducting a, a 240-patient uh, international, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial in our lead indication for a disease called oral lichen planus. And so the idea is that the financing that we raised through the Series A will help fund us through getting important results out of that study. And can you talk a bit about the competitive proposition here, because the the drug that is contained in the patch is actually already on the market? Sure. So you're right, we're using an active uh, ingredient that is well known and well characterized, but the secret or secret sauce or different, different to our approach is that we have this uh, patch technology platform that we use a, a, a unique manufacturing technique called electrospinning, and by virtue of using this manufacturing method, we get a patch that sticks really well to wet surfaces. So if you think of a Band-Aid putting it on wet skin, usually just falls right off. That's what happens with traditional patch technologies. With our technology, it sticks really well. And so that's why we're focused on mucosal diseases, because we can deliver drugs and APIs to wet surfaces in a way that other technologies can't. And your lead indication is oral lichen planus. Why isn't anything FDA approved already for that, and what's used off-label? It's a great question. So you're right, nothing is FDA approved for it. Uh, what's used off-label is mostly steroid, ointments, creams, mouthwashes, none of which work really well. And so if you think about uh, these patients have bleeding, they have ulcers, uh, they have pain all in lesions all over their cheek, their gum, their, their, uh, their tongue, and they're trying to, right now, what the only thing that's available to them is to take a steroid cream, a clobetazole cream, and try to put it on the lesion inside of your cheek. And as you might imagine, with your tongue, your saliva, just normal mouth movement, it doesn't stick there very long. And so the fundamental problem is you're not getting the drug to stay at the site of disease long enough to have an impact on the disease. And so that's the fundamental problem that we're trying to address with our patch, is because we stick well to wet surfaces, you can put it on top of the lesion the patient has in their mouth, and it sticks. We have data showing it'll stick on average for 90 minutes in these patients' mouth, and it's very tolerable for them, and it's easy to use and get the drug to the site of disease enough to impact the course of the disease. So even though we're using an API that's well characterized and well known, we're applying it in a way that no one else has been able to so far. Do you have any thoughts at this early stage about pricing? Not yet, it's still early to tell, and you know, we're, the key will be the, in the strength of our data. And so as we have results from the phase 2B study, that'll be the first time we've shown in patients the, the uh, profile of, of our therapeutic. We have data showing that we can apply a patch without the drug in it to patients, and it's very tolerable, and it sticks even longer than we need it to. And this is the first time we'll show what the true you know, uh, risk-benefit profile is of, of our drug in a very robust trial, 240 patients, placebo-controlled, three different dose strengths, a whole series of secondary and primary endpoints looking at not only safety, but efficacy. So I think um, coming out of that, we'll have a better idea of what, our, what the product profile looks like and what the right path forward is. And what other mucosal diseases are you targeting? 
great question. So, you know, our platform is quite flexible. We can change the, the characteristics of the patch. We can change the drug that we administer. So it can really go after any mucosal disease where you need uh, to deliver something topically. And so our lead program, as you talked about, is oral lichen planus. We've also talked about a second program we have in a women's health disease called vaginal lichen sclerosis, which is also a mucosal disease. Uh, we showed some data at the last EA, um, uh, European Academy of Oral Medicine conference that we can deliver lidocaine using our patch, so for other indications. So really a whole variety of oral or, and uh, mucosal diseases are what we can go after by changing the characteristics of the patch and then changing the drug that we deliver. And what milestones are you looking forward to in the next year or so? So the key one for us will be data out of our ongoing 240 patient study in oral lichen planus. We expect data there in about a year. And can you share your thoughts about what kind of exit you're planning for the future, or ideally? Sure, so the, the way we're building the company is to build a company of scale, uh, one that can take this product, uh, our lead product to OLP, all the way through uh, approvals in US and Europe and into commercialization and bring a pipeline of therapies uh, behind that. And so our base case is uh, to pursue uh, further private financing at the right time public financing, an IPO uh, type strategy. Um, although if there's people that come along and are interested in talking to us about our partnerships or other things, we're always open to having those discussions. But our base case is to build a company for success and finance it and build the team for success. And so does that mean that the target prescriber population is, is fairly narrow? So for oral lichen planus, uh, the key target is oral medicine specialists. So yes, it is fairly narrow. Some of these patients are also can be treated by dermatologists, but the main one is oral medicine. Mm -hmm. And just a final question, do you have any thoughts about the meeting so far, what your plans are here? Yeah, so as usual, it's a great meeting, a great way to kick off the year, really a across all the different uh, folks that are interested in pharmaceutical and biotech. You find them here as investors or uh, uh, credential partners. Um, you know, we're opportunities to raise a profile of the company by talking to outlets such as yourself. So a great meeting, and this one I don't expect to be any different than, than all the other ones in the past. So it seems like a lot of enthusiasm so far, great attendance as always. So it's a great, great way to kick off the year and really have a chance to talk a little more about a fix and have the various different stakeholders understand what we're doing a little bit more. Thank you, Nishan. Thank you, Emily. Appreciate your time.